Hey everyone, Lacey with Synergy Sports. Uh, today we're going to go over how to log our game. So we've already gone through the process of setting up our rosters, adding in additional players, and adding our game. So now we're going to learn how to live log that game. So in this scenario, we're going to utilize a video on my screen in place of what you may be watching on the field to live log a game. So what we're going to do is go and select our game that we'd like to log. So remember, this is the game that we added previously. It already has my lineup set. It already has everything ready to go. So now I'm going to go to the log tab in the upper right hand corner so that I can now get ready to log my game. So this is what everything's going to look like. Your hitters and your pitchers and defensive players will be set up how you added them early on. And then you'll be able to proceed as usual. Everyone will be in order from the leadoff all the way down to the nine hitter. So we're gonna make sure that that leadoff hitter's in there. And you'll also notice um, that your batter should match up with the side of your hitter. So if you have a lefty leadoff batter, you'll notice that the leadoff will be a left-handed hitter here and vice versa. So since I'm live logging, what I'm gonna need to do first is select this box in the right side or upper right-hand corner that says no video. You'll notice when I do that, now I have a green button at the top left that's going to let me start logging. So I'm going to make my screen a little bit smaller for you guys so that you can now see not only my logger, but also my media player. My media player is going to be in place of me watching a live softball game. So all I'm going to do is get to the first pitch of the game. So in this situation, whether it's a manager or a player or someone that's helping you out, even a coach, they're gonna be waiting for the game to start. And once we get to that first pitch, we can start the logging process. All right, so what we're gonna do, once the pitcher is stepping on the rubber and about to throw her pitch, we are going to press our green start button. So you can start that at any time, depending on if you want to see a long beginning or a shorter one, okay? Pitch is finished, I'm gonna press stop and that was a strike. So I'm gonna click T for strike taken. You can also do this with your keyboard. So any of these uh, letters right here are going to be hot keys on your keyboard that you can also do this with to make the process go a little bit faster. So now same thing, the pitcher's about to throw her pitch. I'm going to press start, stop, and then that time it was a foul ball. So I'm gonna select that. As we're going through this process, you guys can add as much or as little information as you want. So let's say on the next one, I want to add location of the pitch. I'm still gonna press stop and start as normal. Okay, that one was in play. Okay, I'm gonna press stop, in play under pitch result, and then I'm gonna come up to this field tab right here and select what happened. So that was a line drive, soft hit, out and it, they hit it to the second baseman. So I'm gonna click that and click apply. Now my next hitter is gonna come up automatically in my lineup and I'm ready to go. So again, I'm gonna press start and stop. That one was called ball. So I'm going to press ball here. And again, if you want to add in the location, you can do that. If you wanna add in fastball, change up curveball on the left side, you can do that as well. So as we're going through, we're basically charting the game. So you're gonna follow through, just tagging in as much information as you would like. And as we keep going through, uh, a couple things to think about. You can notice on the right side, our balls and our strikes are automatically added up. So that's gonna help you keep track of everything. Just to know what count you're in, if you missed a pitch, something like that. If you missed a pitch, it's not the end of the world. We can always go back and add it in the post game process. But we're just gonna continue to log the game, um, putting in balls and strikes as the umpires called it. So if you are doing this in an inner squad setting and let's say you don't have a real umpire, um, your manager is gonna do they, the best they can or whoever's logging the game will do the best they can to make sure everything is accurate. All right, this time we had ball four. So now, since the ball wasn't put in play, we go to our non-ball and play result, and I'm going to choose walk. And now I'm going to hit apply. Apply is your button that you're going to hit when an at-bat is over. So that's what allows you to now 
go and have the next player come up in the lineup. So that's really the only time you're going to press apply is if you have a new player coming up. All right, so again, we have a ball in play and that one was a single. So I'm going to hit ball in play, go up to the field, line drive, single, hard hit. Again, you can add in as much or as little as you want here. I'm gonna click apply since now we have a new batter coming up. And you'll notice that because we've had back-to-back -back singles that we now have runners at first and second base, and they're gonna be associated with the hitters that we're hitting in those situations. And as we keep going, we just continue to log the game. As I said, we can add in if the ball was high, if it was a fastball, you can add in all of those things. Um, if you notice, when I choose my location down here, if it's out of the zone, you're gonna get an automatic ball popped up. So let's say they swung in that situation, then we would just change that to strike swinging. Okay, now we have a bunt single. So I'm gonna press stop again, in play, up at the top. We have our option for bunt right here. So I'm going to go bunt, single, soft. I'm gonna click where that bunt went, apply. And again, now we see that the bases are loaded and my next hitter is coming up. So we continue to log the game through this process. Um, some important key things to note as you're doing this is remember when a pitcher walks somebody or strikes somebody out, that we are choosing strike out or walk here and then pressing apply. If you do forget that step, then what's going to happen, I'm gonna pause this game right now. If we forget that step in a situation where it's a walk or a strikeout, what's going to happen is the balls over here are going to continue to increase, which it's gonna give you a little uh, red coloring right here to remind you, hey, this shouldn't be happening. Um, but if you haven't pressed apply yet, you'll also be able to flag it or press undo to be able to go back. Ideally, we're going along with the game, we're remembering our steps, and then everything will match up nicely. Um, the other thing that will happen is once we get to three outs, this has been kind of a long inning, so we'll continue to move forward here. But once we have three outs, our software will also automatically switch over the home and away teams to bring up the new lineup so that everything stays in order. Um, but that's our logging process. As I said before, you can utilize as much or as little as you want within the screen to make it go by faster. And we can also go back and add more information at the conclusion of the game. Let's say you have a pitch chart or something like that. Um, one last thing I will show you is how to make a substitution. So let's say we're going in the game and now we have a pinch hitter coming up. I'm going to click the name of the current hitter and then I'm going to choose a pinch hitter out of my substitution section. Once I click that, I'm gonna click done and now my pinch hitter is up and all of her tags will be associated with her. Um, so that's really all you're going to need to know. As far as logging goes, just like with anything in softball, it's going to take some reps to get used to it. But as you have um, that person that's logging continue to do games, they're going to become a pro and you will not have many issues there. Um, so let's say we've completed this game. I'm going to click completed here at the bottom. Click yes. And then now I'm going to go back. It's going to give me that I have to wait to save changes. I'll click yes because the saving operation is still in progress. Sometimes that can take a little bit of time. And then now I can go back. From here, I'm going to show you guys now how to import a video and how to sync. Um, so I've imported this video previously but I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process now. So typically, if you haven't imported a video yet, you're gonna have this dash here in the video section associated with that game. So then I'm going to click import, and then here would be blank as well, but I'm going to select, I'm just gonna add another camera angle. So let's say you have center field camera and high home camera. You would choose two angles there, and then now I'm going to choose a high home option and I'm going to add the video file. You just select whichever video you want. So we'll select that. Once it's ready to go, you're just going to click the start button here. I'm going to not click the start button on this one just since my video is already imported and already uploaded. 
Um, but once you press start, you will then be able to do the sync process right away, which is great. So again, I've already added mine, so I'm gonna delete the second one. And then now, once I've pressed start, I'm going to go to the sync tab in the upper right hand corner. Make this a little bit bigger. Once I'm in sync, you'll see that my video has popped up that I've imported and I'm gonna go over to event sync in the top left. And now we'll see our tags that we clipped during the game, okay? Right now, they are associated with the very beginning of the game because I haven't put them in order yet. So what I'm going to do is now find the very first pitch of the game and I'm going to sync up our tags with that pitch. Um, if you want this process to go a little faster, you can always use your plus five seconds or plus 30 seconds tab here to scroll to the right spot. And then once you're almost there, just go ahead and press play. And I'm going to pause it right about at the time that I started the start button when I was logging the game. So I'll press pause here. I should be in a good spot and I'm going to click sync events. And now everything in my timeline will match up. So it will be in line with my hitters that we're hitting and I'll get the video and the data information that was associated with that clip. So I'll press play here. And now I'm able to see the full pitch that was thrown. If you wanna be able to see and zoom in a little bit more to the number of the pitch, you can do that with the plus or the minus here. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the next pitch is in the right spot. So I'm gonna click next event and I can see that it is. And I'll keep going through. You just wanna make sure you check the first couple clips, make sure that they're in order, that you've got the right name associated with pitcher and the hitter and that you have your pitch result correct. So right now we know we're correct. We have a line drive and play, which is what just happened. And I'm gonna to go to my next hitter. And again, we're all matched up. So once you see that the first five to 10 clips are matched up, you should be in a pretty good position to move forward. Once I've synced everything, I'm just going to press apply and that's gonna save my order of all of my pitch tags. So that is how you use our team logger, how you sync events. Um, we talked about substitution, so that should be everything you guys need to be able to set your games up and log away.